see All right. Good morning. So on this whole new beginnings thing, obviously it was uh, overwhelming at first because there were so many different directions. Yes. And after praying and praying on it for maybe a week, it was about three in the morning, mm -hmm. and that still small voice, God's like, Rahab and Jezebel. Excellent. I thought, okay, we can have fun with this, Lord. <laughs> and I have. I have learned a lot myself, and Fantastic. I'm hoping that uh, I relate yeah. what the Lord's laid on my heart. Fantastic. So without, I'm going to pray first. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity to come in your house today yes. and be with the fellow prayer warriors and my mentors yes. and everybody else, Father God. Lord, I ask that this this not be any of my words, none of my revelation. None, this is only a reflection of you, Holy Spirit, Amen. and what you can do. And thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to convey your word. Yes. That Jesus is holy name we pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, so we are going to start off. I'm going to do some Bible reading today. It's okay. We are going to start off in Joshua 2, good. verses 1. Yes. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go over and look the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and yes. stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. Mm -hmm. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and enter your house because they have come to spy out the land. So, we know right there, from reading and from further on, news travels fast yes, in that thing. You know, they were there to spies, but they were found out. And where her house was, it was on the corner, uh, you know, close to the gate. It was basically essentially like a red light district. Yes. You know, all the who's who was coming in and out of there. They always had their, you know, I'm assuming they might have had their version of pimps and all that that's watching everything. But word travels fast. And... But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them to the roof and had hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid on the roof. Yes. So the men sat out in pursuit of the spies and the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan as soon as the pursuers had gone through the gate was shut. So, automatically, we know that she lied. <laughs> yeah, she totally lied. But it was one of those sins that it's either, I'm going to completely divulge where these prophets of God are that have crossed my past, or I'm going to take a lie and do it. Which one is kind of the lesser of the two evils and which could possibly bring God glory? Mm -hmm. So she chose to say the lie to save the spies, yes. God's people. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, she was totally... Stepping out in faith at that moment, yes, yes, you know, yes, she she that they came from a pagan city, you know, with pagan gods. She was a gentile, a non-Jew, and so I mean everything was completely off in the <laughs> normal Bible trajectory of who would be helping these Absolutely. people. Right. Right. Number eight, or on starting on verse eight, before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, "I know the Lord has given you this land, and a great fear of you has fallen on us." So that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Yes. So, by seeds of testimony that were being sown from other people, yes. she got wind. And so in a in a sight unseen, she stepped out in faith. She, you know, from what she had been exposed to with her pagan God, she wasn't seeing the miracles that are coming after. She wasn't hearing these war story hero type deals that were coming out under his, the fake God's rule. And so she, out of other people's testimonies, seeds were planted and eventually got to Rhea. There you go, sister. All right. <laughs> and then so... After she stepped out in faith, and she did this and put herself and everything on the line against the king of her people, in verse 12 she says, Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. 
Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father, my mother, brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord give us the land. So she let them down uh, from the window of her house that was on the city wall, and she told them where to go. Uh, she told them how to hide in the hills. She made this oath with them and stepped out in faith. And, you know, the, the spies told her, look, you know, if your family is not in your house, if you do not have that silver, you know, that uh, velvet silver cord, or not silver, red cord, that's uh, hanging out your window, we're not responsible. They're out in the street, they're doing this, that, and the other, but you and your house in this moment, we're going to follow through with our promise. And then, so she, in faith, believed that. So we're going to jump all the way to Joshua um, 6. Verse 22. Yes. And so Joshua, who was head of all this and sent the spies initially and had been the conqueror and had this wonderful, you know, repertoire with God, basically. In verse 22, he said to the two men who had spied out in the land, go to the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So they went into Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers and sisters, and all that belonged to her. And they brought her out of the entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. And it jumped down to 25. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. And she lives among the Israelites to this day. So, she stepped out in faith. She was a completely unlikely candidate. You know, and it was at the point where is it do I trust this God or do I trust this culture, this popularity thing? Do I go in with the king? You know, am I going against everything that I know or am I stepping out into this place to a God that I don't know? Mm. I'm just seeing the faith. I'm just I'm stepping out. There you go. And she did. Excellent. Um, she made a decision that would bring God glory. And she's also <laughs> you fast forward in Matthew chapter one and verse five. Uh, so we know that she went to Israel. We know that she was basically exonerated even though she was a non-Jew. That's where she was at. And so she went to Israel and she married Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse. And Jesse, the father of King David. Mm -hmm. So we know that he used a prostitute's bloodline. To be directly tied to Jesus Christ. There you go. And how can you go from a prostitute to being in the bloodline of Christ but God? And in First Chronicles, Salmon did a little research on him. To me, he, in First Chronicles, in two different places, it said that uh, her was uh, her was the father of Bethlehem, kind of like the architect. And then later on in First Chronicles, it says he was named Salmon as the father of Bethlehem. He was kind of like the architect. He, she went from being a prostitute to basically living with the elite. Yes. You know, so he, in my mind, he was almost kind of like a Donald Trump of his day. I mean, if he was the founder, just as Donald Trump has built buildings, for, you know, not politically, but before all that, built buildings and is known as, you know, someone who starts businesses, gets everything prosperous. She kind of got with that, you yes. know, from yes. prostitute to an elite. Yes. All right. And so, and it also proves that she went from Rahab the harlot and the prostitute and known by the sins that she was part of to just Rahab. Yes. It said Rahab and Salmon. It didn't say Rahab the prostitute and Salmon. So, you know, through God, we get washed clean. New Thank titles. We are not called you. by our name. Yeah, you All right. So, now that we know a little bit about Rahab's story, we are going to go to 1 Kings chapter 9. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I went. I went to second king. That's okay. We're good. I apologize. We're good. We're good. I'm getting there. Okay. Actually, we're going to do First Kings, chapter sixteen, verse thirty. Okay. Ahab, son of Omri, did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any of those before him. He not only considered it trivial to commit the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, but he also married Jezebel, daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, and began to serve Baal and worship him. Mm -hmm. So, Ethbal was uh, Jezebel's dad. 
F ball, the meaning of his name means ball is with him. And so he was he was kind of like uh uh not the full king over Phoenicia and that whole area, but he was high up, kind of like over a certain part. He was a priest. Um and Baal, if y'all don't know, was a fertility god. Yeah. Um, a lot of people think him and Moloch are the same uh, because they had the same type of looks. A uh, mix of a man, a demon, a goat, or a toad. Um, but they were both fertility gods. They had sex orgy rituals, sacrifice kids, like everything that was pagan and against that. And Jezebel, her name meant about three different versions. One was exalted by Baal, one was virgin of Baal, and the other one was whore of Baal. So either way, her bloodline was completely pagan from the very start. Yeah. And where her dad was the high up, she was raised essentially like a priest, uh, princess. And you know, and then there was arranged marriages. That's how she ended up getting with Ahab. And that's why you know it was a you know Phoenician and Israeli alliance because you know they, they were trying to make things strong. So, uh, and then we're going to go First Kings twenty. And this, this kind of explains a little bit of Jezebel, because Jezebel, not only did she bring 450 of the prophets from Baal to there to kind of saturate Israel, which was completely against God, she had all of God's prophets killed. You know, they, they, had, they put a big Baal statue and altar in the kingdom. You know, there was everything. So, but Elijah turns out to be her big, you know, competitor here. But in, to show her kind of personality in 21 says sometime later there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Nabal the Jezreelite the vineyard was in Jezreel close to the palace of Ahab king of Samaria mm -hmm. Ahab and Nabal let me have your vineyard to use for vegetable garden since it's close to my palace in exchange I will give you a better vineyard or if you prefer I will pay you whatever it is worth but Naboth replied the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors so Ahab went home sullen and angry because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. And he laid on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? And he answered her, because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place, but he will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel, his wife said, is this how you act as a king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up, I'll get you the vineyard from Naboth the Jezreelite. And she did. She had him killed. Mm -hmm. But in this, in this right here, this shows the perfect uh, example of what type of relationship they had. Ahab is a beta male at its core definition. And Jezebel was this control. It's like they had swapped roles. Yes. You know, in 1 Timothy 6, uh, verse 11, it explains what a man is supposed to be. You know, the righteous virtues and things of that nature and how he's supposed to hold the house. And in 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 15, it explains how women should be submissive, modest. And it's, they, their relationship was the complete opposite. It was complete opposite of what God had ordained us as what we should be, what we should be as just individuals or as an marriage relationship. Um, so, along with all of our different atrocities, if you skip down to verse 23... It said, concerning Jezebel, the Lord says dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Mm -hmm. And it said that again in 2 Kings 9 through 10. And so, I mean, this was a prophecy that had went on and went on. Oh, I lost some places. But in, during this time, she grew up as a princess, didn't have any, you know, major obstacles or anything other than she was just being hurt she was loyal to her people she was loyal to her queen and for that i guess you know maybe that's an attribute to some but she was loyal to her people and then they come to the part where she was going after elijah so elijah went up and as y'all probably know the two bulls and you know whoever sent fire and so after they said in the bible it went to morning the noon the night and all these people from the ball all these different priests are begging and pleading they're scratching themselves tearing their clothes begging ball to police and fire and at one point elijah was even going over there and taunting them yeah. it's like maybe you're going to sleep maybe you should do a little louder maybe he went on a walk you know he he's completely talk but he had this confidence with the lord which and then once they were done 
Elijah went over and I had the his bull built three different times to where so much water was like pouring off at the same the trenches around it were soaked. And he prayed one simple prayer. And that immediately it said the fire from heaven consumed the bull. Consumed it. So there was no discrepancies. So at this point, Jezebel has seen flat out, this my God is not real. Here's the proof. And even as a result, Elijah killed all 450 of her prophets that were there that day. All yes. the prophets of Baal. Yes. So not only did it, it get proven in a uh, who's which God is real, Yahweh versus Baal, all the prophets of hers got destroyed. And yet she was still stuck in her ways. You know, we got Rab who went with no no proof of, you know, God, if you do this for me, then I'll come to you. She went sight unseen. And so that was a... <laughs> I'm sorry, lost my place there. <laughs> Linda's, <laughs> she just silent threw me out for a second. Let me lose my train of thought. That's my fault. But um, so basically, if we do, if we take the story of Rahab, and then we take the story of Jezebel. What are we seeing in society today? Are we seeing that we are stepping in in a, in a place where we are not only saying the testimonies of things we've done, things we've seen, things what's going on in our church? That way, it can get the Rahabs. The, you know, the prostitutes, the addicts, the thieves, the, the felons, whatever it may be, to reach those so God can use those unlikely candidates. I'm a very unlikely candidate. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the prostitute, I fit all of the ones I just named, <laughs> if you go yeah. by my past. Yeah. But, but God. Or are we seeing in society today more of a Jezebel type spirit? These, you know, the feminist movement of we can do everything versus kind of knowing our role as God has ordained us to be. Are we dealing with these beta males who want the woman to whether it be the wife, the girlfriend, the mom, the aunt, whatever title, to handle everything and not be the men. Instead, whine and let women handle. That's It's a complete reverse order of what God does, and God does not bless that. No. You know? And just as Pastor Ray said that Satan doesn't create anything, you know, that he only does basically a perverted, um, counterfeit version of everything. Ahab and Jezebel are a perfect example of that. You know, they are complete... <laughs> complete abomination to disgrace. And you see what they're, you know, Ahab got killed by arrow in battle. Jezebel, they, the, <laughs> Jehu went and this, her servants threw her out the window. And as it was prophesied twice <laughs> that she was going to have the dogs ate up, when they went to go get her, the skull, the hands, and the feet were the only thing left of her body. There was nothing. It had, all the dogs had ate her up. So as the prophecy. So, I know I kind of went a little short. Real quick, oh, but uh, good. yeah, that that's a uh, it's kind of what we want to take with it where we're going to be at today. Are we going to be Rahab? Are we going to step out in faith? Are we going to, you know, have that lineage of Christ or whatever that you know he opens the door for us? Or are we going to try to be like Jezebel and Ahab? You know, and, and in today's society, we just need to be very uh, aware of what we're. Portraying what example we're setting, what testimony we are or not doing, and how that can help others. So, all right. They should pass it on to you now. Okay. Well, God bless you. All right.